This is a welcome addition. This is a new addition they never had this year before. Look at this, guys. Arrival times for the subways. Oh, this is a welcome addition. We actually have MTA workers keeping an eye out for fare beaters. Mm. You know, you would think that the day after that they announced the fare hikes, you know, it is what it is. But anyhow, they said the E train was coming in one minute. Here comes the rest of the passengers I was just on the Q46 bus with. So yeah, as you guys just saw, they did add a new arrival board for the trains. E-Train should be coming on this track. So here it comes. Yeah. So here we go. Can I get a seat today, it looks like. Almost on that car. Better get in this one. Yep, it's in that car. Yeah. On the way to Manhattan. So I just came from this uh, exit right here. Pretty convenient. Maybe they're finally getting the layout of the station together, but the reason why I took the camera out is to show you the good side of New York that not that many people get to see nowadays. See you guys? I know New York gets a lot of bad press in the national news, but Again, there's always a good side of it, you know? So, brand new Spanklin, I don't know guys, there's so many words for this awesome area right now. Look, they even redid the sign here. So, I have a thing to do here at Penn and I'm gonna take care of in just a bit. So, I'll be back in a bit, guys. Just wanted to do that little showcase for you back there. So I'll be right back. All right, well, it looks like the new Long Island Railroad service waiting area is being worked on still, which is excellent news. Here for the 7th Avenue concourse, because again, if I were to take a train from here to let's say Kew Gardens or Auburndale, I would have to be in one of the first front cars because I know the layout of both Auburndale where the elevator is and then of course how the platform is laid out so the reason why I had to take care of something first this morning well this afternoon now it's the afternoon I had to buy a New Jersey transit ticket yes I'm going back to Hoboken in June and there will be a separate video on that definitely next month. Um, I've already worked on the economics and that was one of the first part of it today. So here we are, I'm on 7th Avenue and I wanna get my lunch, so that's what I wanna do right now. All right, so I got my lunch and you know who was really generous today? The guy in 99 Cent Fresh gave me a can of soda on the house today. That was really nice of him. You know, I gave him my five and he was really generous. I'm gonna make the slight, woo! Okay, looks like I can go to my destination that way, guys. Okay, so as many of you are aware, there is a rider strike going on today and I am hoping to maybe maybe get a glimpse i might get to meet the one the only colin jost now if you don't know who he is he is the lead anchor of weekend update on saturday night live with michael j and because of the rider strike that began on may 2nd season 48 
had an abrupt ending. So right now I'm here at Times Square and I'm gonna walk over to 49th Street here on Broadway to make up some time. So my pizza's hot, I took a quick bite of it. Maybe I'll grab a seat for a bit near the roller skating rink. It's that time of the year where Rockefeller Plaza has it converted to that and just sit outside. Cause it's gorgeous out here today. Just wish this haze would go away, but yeah. I might get to meet Colin, guys. All right, we're now on West 49th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. And as you can see right here, the Riders Guild workers, the NBC workers, the people who work hard to produce content to, of course, provide entertainment are on both sides of the sidewalk. So right now they have this big inflatable rat over here and this side of the sidewalk is pretty crowded. So I'm going to try to cross over here at this time to get a better point of view. So here we are. Riders Guild is here. They are definitely here, guys. They are here with a vengeance today. So as a result, we have traffic backed up on 6th Avenue because of this, but this is for a good reason. Yep, look at that. There are the signs, guys. Excellent privilege just now to rally with actress and writer Wanda Sykes. So we're going to hear a lot from people today. We're going to go back to this in just a second. I got to throw up my can. What do you want? So I just spoke to one of the writers off camera. And I'm going to be doing a lot of off-camera interviews today to get a point of view of the people who, of course, these wonderful writers, to be exact, that are rallying for a better wage. So there's three reasons why the Writers Guild is striking. I'll get into the main reason that I spoke to, I think, three nice ladies who let me speak to them off-camera. So the deal is... The actors who are on streaming services, what's going on here is they are upset. There we go, I got to throw up my can. They are upset, bottom line, that, you know, why are their counters, the actors who are on these streaming services, are getting a better pay than the writers? You know, that doesn't make any sense, especially in this day and age with inflation. And, you know, the salaries is one part of it. The other reason, AI computing. You know, we cannot have AI computing taking over human thinkers, human development, 
of these wonderful shows that are bought to uh, are bought to us by these riders. You know, this building right here, not this building, it's the, one of these buildings, whatever it is. This is where Rock, this is where Saturday Night Live is written every week. And, you know, they, it gets streamed on Peacock. You know, how is it fair to them? You know, it's not right. It really isn't, guys. So that's why we're standing with Riders Guild. We're standing with SAG. SAG is supposedly um, potentially going on strike in June. Fran Tresher, the um, president, has authorized a strike sometime next month. The board agreed with her in California. So SAG is also going to go on strike potentially too, guys. Not just, you know, the WGA here. So let's go back to where we were. And we're going to stand with these riders. And we're going to support them right now. Because it's not fair to the little guy. And New York is a union town. And they have every right to do this. They're not under the tail of America. So let's go back to where we were. We can't take time off either. Because if we do so, then we are going to find ourselves taking off. Because the only language that producers understand is money. And so we have to communicate to them by shutting down as many productions as we can. Bus makes a cameo. Look at that. <laughs> you know, I'm surprised the police have not shut down West 49. I'm surprised they're letting traffic go through right now, but this is scheduled to end at 2 o'clock. Yep, no AI! No AI! technological changes. The future of the stories we tell, of free speech, and of basic equity depends on a fair and equitable union contract. We will not allow studios to turn writing into an entirely freelance profession. Entertainment industry revenue, I know a few folks have already talked about this, was more than $220 billion last year. What we're asking for would cost studios less than 2% of the profits they make off of our work. And it's still less than what writers used to be paid, by the way. Many of our friends in studios have told us how much they value diversity and inclusion. And if we're being fair to them, I am proud of the tremendous steps that we've taken over the years. Yep, no Some AI. Like Disney have done a lot on diversity and inclusion, and we want to support them in the free speech challenges they face in places like Florida. But when big media companies are unwilling to negotiate a fair contract, when they refuse to pay their writers fairly, when they reject reasonable professional protections, their actions have shown the world yep. perhaps they don't that. actually value Somebody just hot to support the writers. Just like the about. <laughs> so to our friends in these companies, 
It's not good enough to do the performative stuff. Oh. And here's a rainbow emoji for Pride Month. It's not good enough to stream a non-union special about Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month this month. The contract that was made has serious and disproportionate implications for black writers. Yep, so the writer we just heard from was begging for a contract, so let's hope they do get fairness. Today is the day HBO Max becomes Max. That's right. Can you feel the electricity in the air? They said America couldn't do it, but we finally did it. We came up with a name dumber than Quibi. <laughs> Who is signing up for it now that it's just Max? That tells me something. That tells me the struggle over naming it tells me something that people don't care about the name. They care about the shows on the service. Yeah! People aren't looking for HBO Max or Max. They're not looking for the streaming service that's run by David Zaslav. They're looking for the shows that writers and artists create. Yeah! That's right. That's right. I want to say it's been an incredible honor, honor and privilege in particular to be on the picket line with all of my comments and Wednesday and Variety shows. Because we, as you've no doubt noticed, these shows are the first shows to go off the air during a strike. And so if you desperately want your favorite late night shows take on something in the news that we've missed, something like George Santos getting indicted or Rudy Giuliani ordering Viagra by the pallet, or whatever. Tell the AMTPTP <laughs> to give us a fair contract. Yeah. By the way, yet another sign that they need writers. A horrible name, AMPTP. <laughs> it sounds like something a three-year-old would put down in Scrabble. <laughs> Um, and I'm incredibly honored and thrilled to see so many other unions here. Look at this, we got office workers. And that is because Standing in solidarity the upstairs. And the producers, they have the money. The CEOs and the companies, they have the money. They admit they have the money. They know they have the money. Why are they fighting us? They are fighting us because they are fighting the principle of unionism. Yep. And we are fighting for the principle of unionism, for collective bargaining. And for better salaries! And it felt good to say that. That's say why that. we are all here together. And I just want to say really quickly before I go, once again, it is a thrill to be with all of you, but especially with all of my friends from Late Night and Comedy Variety, because we are here to protect that form of writing. No artificial intelligence! Who's to see so many friends and colleagues who you don't get to see that often from the late night community and to participate in something like this together and especially just participate in something that doesn't end with all of us standing there losing to John Oliver. Look at that. More people so upstairs are gathering to, to see to this. Thank you to all the unions here and thank you for standing up yep. for the principle of unionism against Public advocate. What you see is the end result. You see the judgment of history that management was in the right and the striking workers were wrong. Never, ever. Sometimes there are strikes that history judges to be ill timed, but even then, history never confuses power and morality. The AMPTP confuses power with morality. 
like everyone who's ever been on the wrong side of history. Love is not strike because we're greedy. Being out on strike is really hard. It's costly. It's scary. It's entertaining and infuriating in equal measure. So workers go out on strike only when we have to. Workers strike not because we're greedy, but because our bosses are greedy. If you are a studio or a network or an entity connected to the AMBTP, you a lot more be people a here very right nice now. person. Where I'm standing. a liberal person who does really great things in the world. You may get a huge, a huge wad of cash every year for all sorts of great causes and for decent, by which I mean democratic candidates. But you should be asking yourselves, why do you to give to good causes? exact same speech he gave in my graduation. <laughs> Play fair, pay fair. I love that. Your song. next speaker. It's not WGA here. It's the whole labor movement, coast to coast. <laughs> Brother Solidarity looks like brothers, sisters, siblings, comrades, colleagues, everybody standing shoulder together. Shoulder to shoulder, fighting together, supporting each other. This is what solidarity looks like. A thousand plus strong out here in the streets, and we're doing it every day until we win a contract that meets our members. So I'm just waiting for the elevator to use the restroom here. Here's the roller skating rink. Really fancy elevator, and they even have the uh, rink level mat here. <laughs> All right, guys, so there you have it. Uh, that's a little bit of a glimpse of what you saw today. Yeah, am I, am I upset I didn't see Colin today? Maybe he was there earlier. I don't know, but hey, Wanda Sykes was there, so that was an unexpected thing today. So I um, was just checking my text messages, and the good news is the F train does not have any delays right now, so... Uh, I'm going to take the F heading back to Queens at the moment. Since I'm already here at Rockefeller Plaza, I might as well just go that way. And uh, at least the CBTC can be hit or miss, but hey, you know, you, you make the best out of it, guys. You do what you can, and that, that's all that I have to say for now. So um, tomorrow it sounds like they're going to go back to the negotiating table, and uh, let's hope that... WGA can get a fair contract because again you can't have you know artificial intelligence and salaries not meeting up the demands of today's workforce so that's where I'm gonna leave it so I'm gonna get going I'm going to look for the subway right now well guys I just got screwed by the bagel store had nothing in there and that's where I slipped and fell a couple of weeks ago and almost just did again to get on my bus so yeah I'm disappointed right now guys you know I literally stand with the riders for a whole hour in Midtown and this is what I get <sighs> boy so I'm, I'm upset right now, guys. And you know, the lady at the counter tells me, oh, you have to buy the whole bag. I'm like, really? I was literally ready to give her $1.25, okay? And I don't know, guys. It was just a mess in there. They literally had no stock in there. It was all cleaned out. I'm like, really? I'm just lucky the guys in Fresh Meadows with bagels in both places, they'll, they'll have it. They'll have it. So, right now it is 2.15, and hopefully I should be back in Fresh Meadows in about 15, 20 minutes. Ah, boy. Uh-oh, do we have a breakdown? Yep. We got a breakdown. 
Yep, don't know what bus this was. But what's a Casey Stangle bus doing on Parsons Boulevard? That's very, very weird. Hmm. So I'll get the number once we get past the light. But that's that's suspicious, guys. Why is there a Casey Stangle bus parked here? Because Q25 and Q34 are run. Okay, we do have a driver going into the going into the right end over there. Okay. But yeah, that's a little bit suspicious. But as soon as I saw a four, I was like, huh? Because usually college point buses don't have double digits. All right, so here we go. Four two one zero. Oh. And that's definitely a Casey Stangle bus. I just saw Next stop, the. Uh, just hold the uh, emblem, uh, emblem on the side. So, don't know what was up with that. Okay, so, I'm going to explain why I immediately got on the subway this morning. So, what happened was, I had to make up a lot of time today. I had to make up a lot of time today because... Obviously, I had to go to Penn Station first, then get my lunch in Times Square, Touch yellow tape and I had to walk from Times Square to get over to the rally today. So, that is the story, guys. So, I'm passing 164th Street, and yeah, that's what happened today. I was supposed to work, but let's just say that uh, my office was closed today. Let's just keep it as that. I guess everybody wanted to take vacation early. <laughs> so, hopefully I should be back at Long Island Jewish next week. That would be the, uh, the end goal, you know? So, this would have been my plan B today. Yep, this is the other bagel place that used to be here on Surrey Place. And it recently closed. Now, I could go to Lulu's, but here's the thing. They get pretty busy in there, just like bagels and co. And they may not get my order right of getting a bagel. That's why I gotta go to 188th Street. All right, so I just paid a dollar fifty, and it's probably the same price I would pay in Hoboken anyway. But yeah, got my lunch for tomorrow, and I am so happy right now. The camera down for a second. Set this up because I gotta make the walk home. But yeah. Guess nobody on the bus wanted a bagel, but they were they were well stocked. They were well stocked, which I was very happy about today. They had any type of bagel you could think of in there, and I know a single was a dollar fifty, like I mentioned, but you know what? I was just glad that I made up a lot of time right now, and I should be home. Oh no, a cracked sidewalk. I should be home in about. Hopefully, 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes walking from here. Okay, guys, so that's going to conclude the video. I, uh, again, thank you all for watching. And if you made it through the whole thing, even if you watch the whole WGA parts, I uh, really thank you for doing that because it shows that you are in solidarity with the Writers Guild, with the Screen Actors Guild, and... As I've said, you know, um, Fran Trescher, the president of the SAG, is doing the right thing, standing behind the riders, and, you know, definitely feels that if a strike is needed, then we'll see what happens on their end. So... I'm going to wrap this up, guys. Thank you all very much for watching. And until the next one, please take care.